All right, in this video, we're going to talk about access keys, which allows users to actually um, jump around through different parts of your application and interact with them, all without having to actually um, use their mouse. Uh, this is going to cover F2.3 within the textbook. Um, the access key stuff uh, in A, and the uh, apply the concept section, we're not going to talk as much about. Uh, that'll be up to you to do for yourself within the actual practice of the textbook. So in the last video, when we were talking about designing the GUI, you might have noticed a couple of strange things. Um, I did say that underlined text is not good for a GUI, and yet there are some pieces of text that are underlined, such as the B in Bill, and the T in Tip, the C in Calculate Tip here, and the X in Exit. Uh, those actually serve a very important purpose. They're not just um, there for emphasis or whatever reason you might have underlined text in a program. Uh, those underlined letters are actually really important. And there's a reason why it's only one letter that's, uh, that's underlined, why it's not always the first letter of a word that's underlined, like how X is underlined in exit. And um, yeah, it's very important. There's also an important reason why there's only underlined letters on some of these controls, not all of them, specifically the controls that have user interaction. The underlined letters signify that those letters are access keys in an application. So an access key is something that allows users to select an object in the application using only their keyboard. So within this application, we have some underlined letters right here, and you would actually use the um, uh, a keyboard shortcut uh, where you press and hold the Alt key on your keyboard, and then you press some letter. The letters being one of these underlined letters right here. So in this particular application, if I pressed Alt and B, that would be the access key associated with the bill. If I pressed Alt and X, that's the access key associated with exit right here. So you would press Alt and the letter associated with that particular control and if that letter is an access key, which if it is an access key, it will automatically be un uh, underlined like this. You don't have to underline it yourself. It will automatically get underlined for you by um, Visual Basic. But if that letter is underlined, it's an access key and you can use the access key to um, actually access different objects in the application without using your mouse. So for example, if you want to enter text in the bill, instead of moving your mouse uh, cursor over and clicking on the text box, you can press Alt B. And it doesn't matter if it's uppercase B or lowercase B, like if you have uh, caps lock on or something like that. Um, none of that matters. As long as you're pressing uppercase or lowercase B, uh, that access key will work. If you want to calculate the tip, you can press Alt C, and if you want to exit the program, you can press Alt X. You can also press the Alt key by itself. You press and release it without pressing another letter to show all of the access keys temporarily in an application. So here is the tip calculator that I have in front of my um, PowerPoint, actually, that you were just looking at, but the um, restaurant tip program. This is the actual completed restaurant tip program right here. Uh, if I uh, want to actually look at the 
access keys because you can see that no letters right here are underlined. If I press the Alt key, all of a sudden there are underlined letters in the uh, different labels right here. Bill, tip, calculate, tip, and exit. So if I press and hold Alt and T, my, cur uh, my cursor is now in the tip percent uh, box. I can put the, you know, I can type in there, do whatever. If I type Alt and B, I can now type in the bill area again. Now, let's say um, I do something like this, $2,000 bill, 30% tip. I am a big spender today, apparently. Um, if I want to actually calculate it and I don't want to move my mouse to do so, note that my mouse is up here, I'm not gonna touch it. I press Alt and C, and it's as if I clicked the button. I uh, put a 40% tip because I'm really feeling generous right now. Alt C, and it just automatically cal calculates it right away. Um, I don't have to press enter or anything like that. It just activates the button as if I clicked it. And if I want to get out of here, I can press Alt and X. Now, a lot of applications, if not every well-designed application that you have on Windows is going to have access keys. If I, um, for example, I'm in PowerPoint right now, if I press Alt, the access keys here look a little bit different because, um, well, I, you know, I couldn't actually tell you why they have it like this, where all of the, uh, you have these boxes with the letters in them and all that kind of stuff. I don't know why, but if I wanted to, in the ribbon menu, go to the um, home tab, Alt H, like that. And then within the home tab, there's even more uh, keys, access keys that I could use, as well as some ones that are grayed out because I can't actively use them. But if I get into some text right here and then uh, yeah, I press Alt, I have to then go to home and then it gives me all the options for text, Alt FF, aerial body, and all that kind of stuff. It gets a, a little bit weird, probably, probably because um, actually a lot of the access keys have to do with things like drop down menus or whatever, and there's not uh, all of these labels right here. Funny enough, Microsoft's own program does not match super well with some of the design standards that we were talking about, but you know, that's fine. They're Microsoft, they can do whatever they want. They're a monopoly. Um, but you'll see access keys on a lot of applications and you can try it in your web browser. You can try it in File Explorer. You can try it in any application you want. You'll probably see a lot of access keys. Now, access keys are fantastic because they allow for disabled users to actually have an easier time or you know, even make it possible for disabled, some disabled users, depending on the disability, to interact with their applications, uh, your application. There are a lot of reasons why someone might not be able to use a mouse, whether it has to do with fine motor control or carpal tunnel or anything like that, where keyboards are a lot easier, especially if they have to use a very wild ergonomic keyboard solution. So, um, just giving that extra piece of functionality to your code makes it a lot easier for some users to actually use your application. So it's extremely important. You should assign access keys to all controls that the user interacts with. Uh, so that's gonna especially be things like text boxes and buttons. Uh, like I showed off before, every single text box in the restaurant um, application had an access uh, key that I was able to use to interact with that area. You also don't want access keys for controls that the user doesn't interact with because then um, the user can't actually select it. You know, trying to use the access key doesn't do anything and it might be confusing or anything like that. It's also a waste of time and resources. Just don't worry about it. Only worry about the access keys that uh, to controls that users interact with. The exception to this being OK and cancel buttons, 
uh, for reasons of these usually have their own dedicated keys. A lot of them will be bound to enter and escape. So usually you don't need to worry about that. Assigning an access key for a control is super easy. Uh, you find the control's caption or identifying label, depending on uh, what type of uh, control it actually is, and you put an ampersand in there um, directly before the key that you want to be the access key. So for a button, you're looking for the text property. The text property of a button is the caption and you would put the ampersand in the caption in order to assign the caption the uh, access key for that button for a text box you would find the identifying label for the text box and then you would put an ampersand in that identifying labels text property um so for the text box you don't put it in the text box itself you find the label that identifies the text box, so you're probably going to have to keep track of your labels like that, and put the ampersand in the identifying label. Uh, and you'll also have to set the tab index of the text box and the identifying label accordingly, um, which we'll talk more about in the next video, also in F2.4 or A2.5. You place that ampersand immediately to the left of the character that is the access key. So for calculate tip, uh, we want Alt C to be the access key for calculate tip, so we put the ampersand in front of the C. For exit, we want the X to be the access key, so we put the ampersand in front of the X. So it's E ampersand X I T, or ampersand calculate tip, or that kind of thing. It is directly to the left of the character that is the access key. Now for your choice in access keys, there are a few rules. You can't just go willy-nilly assigning access keys. Each access key should be unique. So you can't have two controls that both have Alt C as their, or sorry, that both have C as their access key, because then you press Alt C and the computer would get confused and say, well, which one do I choose? Maybe it has to flip a coin, maybe it just freaks out and explodes, who knows? So to simplify things, each access key should be unique. You only use one once. You also should use the first letter of the caption or identifying label of the control that gets the access key. You should use it unless it is already used. If it would if you have duplicates, you should find another access key. You should also uh, not use the first letter if another letter provides a more meaningful association. So for example, exit, we typically use X as the um, access key for exit as opposed to E because X already sounds like exit, right? You, um, you get this more meaningful association. Also because the button to close windows in, well, windows is usually an X. Uh, if you move your mouse over a window on your computer right now, if your computer is windows, at least, um, you'll, if you move it over the, like over to another window and you move it to the top right over that X button, you'll end up with a red box that has a white X in it that will close out the window itself. So we usually associate X with exit when it comes to computing. So X is a great, um, is a great access key for exit. Now, if you can't use the first letter of a label or caption and no other letter gives some meaningful association, you would want to use a distinctive consonant. So maybe a consonant that is not used in any other um, label or caption or anything like that. Uh, if there's only one label or caption or whatever that has like the letter Z in it, then Z might be a good access key. It's memorable because Z is only associated with one of those labels or captions. So distinctive consonants. Consonants that don't really show up 
in other words or consonants that are maybe more prominent in the word that you are um, trying to make an access key for or something like that. Kind of try to make it stand out if at all possible. And then these uh, access keys should be your absolute last choice. If you absolutely have to, you've run out of all other options, whatever. So vowels are pretty common. Uh, you'll want to use them last after all of your consonant choices have possibly run out. Uh, they, they also don't, uh, they, they may not be as, um, you know, they, they may not be as well associated with certain words as consonants are with certain words or anything like that. Um, you know, vowels should be used after consonants because you're less likely to have a very distinct vowel than you are to have a very distinct consonant out of all the options that you have. Also numbers, because numbers may not be clear. It may not be clear what they correspond to. So that's access keys. Uh, as a summary, follow the rules of picking good access keys and make sure every one of uh, your controls that the user interacts with has an access key. It's really important because um, disabled users still need to be able to use your program. So make sure you are accommodating for all possible users. You are a problem solver when you're building an application like this. You are trying to solve problems, but if you're creating more problems for the people whose problems you're trying to solve, that gets in the way for them. It can be pretty awful. So make sure you're not creating more problems in trying to solve other people's problems here. It's very, it's very important. <laughs>